So here is uh, the tourist spot for Lukchin Yingin in Buriram. We have a famous thing we call Lukchin Yingin area. So there you can come here near the market, near the clock tower. If you ever uh, come visit Buriram, you have to try this one. This one very famous in Buriram. So this area very uh, just next to the train station, Buriram's train station. Actually, we stay in Buriram, but we have now we come to this place and try looking in the train station here. You have to come and visit here and then try this meatball. I have so many shops about this like a favorite favorite street food uh, Buriram street food this is like a meatball made from meatball have chicken have fish have sausage so yeah just meatball this favorite uh, street food of Buriram city so when you come here you have to try this one meatball and very famous in Thailand so this one 6 for 20 baht everything 6 for 20 baht 6 stick 6 stick for 20 baht ตัวไหนที่แบบซิกเนเจอร์ของร้านคะตัวไหนอันนี้อันนี้อันนี้หล่อเล็กอ๋อไม่เหมือนกันทั้งหมดใช่มั้ยมาเป็นคําจะปล
So let's go and see what the process is. Now, just as I reverse here, I want to show you the alarms that I put around the property. And that's because modern, in, there's no crime around here, but in modern days, yeah, my grandma has told me that um, a couple of neighbors did have people, opportunists that were passing through the village, come in and grab something. And so I, it's very, very rare. There's no crime here uh, at all. But to protect us, I put these around the farm. It was a kind of a cheap option. So you can see it's just a little red thing there. It's, it's solar powered. And so the solar charges it in the day. And then it's got multiple settings, but this is just set to nighttime. So at nighttime, it'll automatically turn on. And if anybody walks past here or in other areas of the farm, it will signal an alarm, uh, quite a loud alarm and a flashing light too. So just a little added extra security. They were only a few dollars each, so you know they were cheap. So it's just a cheap additional layer of security. You've also got the dogs, you've also got the fence. Um, I put in a little alarm inside the house as well. So, and I got a CCTV on the kitchen. So there's just little things like, it's not gonna go over the top with it, but um, why not? A few, few quid just to be woken up at night in case there was somebody snooping around or trying to get in, into our open kitchen. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do, you know? So well, let's get on with the water thing. So this is where we pick up from, but it looks unusually not so busy. They've got these small bottles and these large, these really tiny ones as well and then you've got the large ones but they've got the packing packing facility here i've seen it busy before but it doesn't seem so busy today what do you care looks like he's doing a big pickup and this must be where they they clean the water and store the water now, I must say that last time I come, there was loads of staff here. There was about 20, 30 people, and they were filling up the bottles and sliding them in to places. And ah, here, this is where they were filling it from. So this is the little filling station. Any names at Adler? Oh, some not lang, can I? Oh no. Any bao ni lo? Bao yang ai kap? She said here is the water for cleaning and then you have to It's going to show us how, how you do it actually. It's very kind of her. So she clean they, they clean the outside. She said this is cleaning the uh, dust off the outside. And usually there's like 20 of them doing this at the same time. And you clean it there. And then she, this is they call bow, which is to blow the inside of the water. She's just turning on the, the mains here. I'm very impressed with this little place though. For rural Thailand, it really is a, a good little operation. And when I tested the water, I was shocked to find it as clean as the spring water. อ่ามันใส่อะไรครับเป็นทรายทรายที่ ah, inside there is a sand that they blast it with and that's just water with no sand. So that's to wash the sand out. <laughs> Sorry, if you didn't get that, that's the sand. It washes the bits of mold off and, um, and cleans the inside of any mold that might be on there. And the second one washes the sand out. And then it goes into here for the processing. So, uh, the, the little bottles coming through here, and then they're filling it in this, in this machine, goes through there and gets filled with the water. 
<laughs> and she's going to do it for me, bless her. I'll give her a nice tip. Thanks, it now. This water here. Oh, I need Namsa Ab. This is the clean water. Ah, and then Bandum Nam, Chama. Cap. So that's it, that's the processing facility and as I've said, I'm very impressed with the cleanliness of the water. Uh, it comes out of this here, it comes along these, these rollers, I'll just switch you around, sorry if it's a bit chaotic, it comes out of there, along the rollers, all the way down here, and I pick it up and we enjoy it. So. They've also got the processing factory in the back here where they seem to be doing the bottling of, of the water. This is like a packaging or something. Oh, this, is, this is a wrap that binds the bottles together in, you know, in your packs of six or packs of 12 that you can see stacked just over there. So, and then this is where they're boxing up boxing up the, um, the cups of water we can't they're all boxed, boxed up nicely so I do and then <laughs> she say 20 baht <laughs> so that's the processing facility guys So now we can rest assured, like I'm, I'm quite anal like this, like I want to know what's going on. Like, is the water clean? I'm giving it to my kids every day. I want to know, like, is it, is it clean or what? And uh, what's the process they go through? And I make sure by testing it at home, that's the important thing. Now I'll go and pay here at the office as well for these six tanks that they've Somehow I managed to get in the car, I don't know how, let's just see. I didn't even have to ask them, I just pull up, open the boot and they've, they've filled it. Now as you've seen on this vlog before, I actually do, I get involved all the time. You know? I don't want Thai people working for me, I work for me, you know, you're the help. Now I get involved with everything, so I usually load up the car. But the wonderful thing about Thailand is they'll just do anything for you. So, this is our little office here, and we got a little kid in the mosquito net. And I've won pay now, I jai hot tank, hot tank. What do you care? Yeah. What do you care? Do you tune, Law? Yeah, Ben Kai. Ben Kai, My Sabai. She said she's uh, sick, she's got a cold. Yeah. Some fish here. Oh. We've got a dog again guys, every time, every time there's a dog. Jiao Kong you nai kha? Jiao Kong you nai? Pham Nang Jai, Kit Kit Tang. Oh, Kao Hong Nam, Ao Nam you. Oh, no, bye bye lai. So I said, Jiao Kong you nai, Jiao Kong, the owner, you nai, where? Um, and she said she's having a shower. So we'll just wait. You notice as well in rural Thailand, people shout at each other. So it's not just like, you know, we would speak quite softly to each other. It's not unusual just to, to shout. So what do you care? <laughs> uh, it's not unusual for people just to be like, ah, oh, she's, you know, I said, Jiao Kong, you know, she said, Kao Bai Ab Nam you. So that's that dog again freak me out um, she shouts come by Abnam you she gone for a shower and you may initially think that's not very polite to shout that way and but it's just the way they talk talk to each other here that's how they talk to each other it's not impolite they wouldn't do it if it was impolite ties are very polite but you just get used to it and you may hear when I speak Thai sometimes on the vlogs got another dog here 
every time. You may hear sometimes when I speak Thai on the vlog that I can also be quite blunt in front of, but I learned that from living here in, in Thailand. Um, in Bangkok, many people will say Kan, Kap, or softly they'll speak, but, um, but here, not always the case. Me panic now, Maggie, Kao Shu Hai Pom. Took young, I yak Hai Kao tip. Yak Hai Kao Nung Roy Bart. So I just song Roy Jet Sip, eh? Hai Kao Nung Roy, eh? Nice, eh? What that has a can by me, Maja Kao Bantin. Oh, I song Leo. Not a lie. Cap. Talk about Nung Roy Jet Sip. Chai. Even here at the water place, I have to have a bloody stick to keep the dogs away. The dogs in Thailand are a pain in the ass. They really are. But in Cambodia, they eat them, yeah? They eat them. And it's not unusual in Thailand to hear of neighbors poisoning the dogs. I certainly would never do anything like that. Um, but troubled dogs. The neighbors poison them and then the owners get very upset and it causes all kinds of chaos here because the neighbors come to hate the dog because you love your dog don't you like oh, i love my dogs my dogs are all right but i can't stand other people's dogs and maybe it's the same for kids i don't know um you love your own kids but you're not so keen uh, not as keen on other people's kids perhaps um, and it's the same with the dogs, so then the neighbours end up getting peed off of the dogs and then they end up poisoning them and it ends up in a lot of legal troubles. It happens a lot in Thailand where people get in trouble with the law for poisoning people's pets, which are the family members. You know, dogs are like your family members, aren't they? Um, so that has been the water, the, the water distillery, or the, what would you call it? The, the water factory. And uh, now I take these back and I unload them. And those six tanks, that's probably done us now for about two weeks. So we're good for two weeks. And then you come back again. And um, I will mention as well that when they're all doing that, like, there's usually like 20, usually women, 20 people in there. And they're all laughing and joking and gossiping and chatting. It's a very like jovial atmosphere. Um, it's just the way it is. Local Thai women, they're probably not paid a lot at all. They're probably only getting like 300 baht a day, so it's, it's not like it's a, a big earner or something like that. But in Thailand, it's a supplemental wage. Um, it's hard to earn in Thailand. It's hard to earn in rural Thailand. I discussed that in my book as well. If you're going to come and live here, your options for rural Thailand are basically online. That's it. I mean, you could get a job in a local school, but don't be expecting more than 20,000, 25,000 baht a month as a foreign teacher around here maybe you get 30,000 35 if you're very lucky thousand baht but generally you're not going to be getting more than that so your options are really work online you might want to look into YouTube which I mentioned in the book you might want to look into teaching online there's lots of different um, opportunities some of which we don't even know if you can do the gray areas within the government at the moment so you really don't know what you can and can't do in this country so I mean, do it until you can't do it. That's what I say. And then one day you can't do it. Well, okay, whatever. But working online, I know many, many expats that work online and run companies from here. And they don't, they don't do the work permit thing. They, they just, they do design work online. They come and, and, and do it. it. It's a bit of a gray area because the Thai's government are prioritized with Farang taking Thai jobs. So what they don't want you doing is driving a tuk-tuk or um, you know, trying to be a doctor or something in, in, in many cases, I mean, it's just some poor examples maybe there, but, but taking Thai jobs, um, the, that's what their focus is. Maybe working in tourism. Can't believe the amount of Russians that I see now working in tourism in these tourist areas like Phuket and Pattaya. Um, it's, I, I don't know how they get, out, get away with it, to be honest. Um, but that's, that's the government's focus. Uh, it's money, that's how they get away with it. But um, the, gov it's, the government's focus is don't be taking tie, no Thai jobs. So if you work online designing stuff for people in the States, um, I, I mean, don't go and tell people that you're doing that. Keep it on the lowdown. But 
that's the kind of supplementary income you're going to need if you want to live in real Thailand unless you're a multi-millionaire it's funny where the ideas come from these vlogs they just pop up in my head and I'm really really excited about the future of life in bamboo we're going to be I'm going to be going on the road a lot more you know I want to take the opportunity to take you guys on the road of course we want the farm content um, but there's a lot to see in Thailand I'm going up to the hill tribes in Mae Hong Song is the, is the next step talking with the Karan tribe there's just all these little things that I want to do and now's the time to do them not many people can get into these tribes I know somebody that knows somebody so um, and I also want to be setting up like a homestay for you guys um, which I'm, I'm going to offer to members first um, because it's going to be more like a but it's not like a money-making enterprise. It's more of an experience. It will cost, but um, it's more of an experience for people to have a unique experience in Thailand to go and stay with the hill tribes. So I've got a lot of stuff going on um, at the moment and travel is going to be on the cards for both channels. So rest assured that is definitely Bluetooth going to be happening. Connected. Now I'm going to do a walkway from here to the kitchen and uh gonna put some concrete right here because sometimes when it rain it make everything wet and sometimes uh otis and ryan he like sleepy around here so um i think better to put concrete um so they're not uh sleepy when it rain and also we're gonna do walkway like this on uh, in front of the cottage side so easy to walk rainy season coming we have to uh, we have to prepare for the wet i have all the sand and i have all the sand and stone and concrete ready to mix it up uh, this one for the brick brick i'm going to do like a sitting area but made by brick and these other three concrete and i already used one and uh, this one is like a stone, full backup stone, full backup sand. So after I mix it, and I'm gonna put in a concrete box, concrete blocks, and make it a walkway. So now we're gonna leave it for five minutes. Actually, I have uh, two blocks, but uh, cannot find another one. So only use one block, it's gonna take a long time. We leave each one five minutes and then we move to another one. <laughs>
So now I uh, doing the walkway from here to the kitchen over there uh, because sometimes when it rain is flooding around here. So better have walkway just uh, for easy and be safe. And this one I just uh, break it down. Not not perfect, but. to fall apart Lose myself and give my heart away Come and go in shady places mm -hmm. I used to sit and stare Now the light runs through my lashes It's taken 40 years, blood, sweat, and tears. Strangers we know become husband 